Shots fired at the Norman Dog Park. The Minneapolis chief of police takes the stand in the trial of Derek Chauvin and an Arkansas governor vetoes a controversial bill. This is OU Nightly. Good evening and welcome to OU Nightly. I'm Caitlin Deggs. And I'm Audrey Goodson. We begin tonight with a tense situation at a Norman dog park. Police responded to calls for help Saturday afternoon. OU Nightly's Emma Sears joins us in the newsroom with that story. Emma? What seems like a typical Saturday afternoon at the Norman dog park ended with police being called and man's best friend in a very unfriendly situation. It's a place where Norman residents can hang up their dog leashes, sit back, and watch their puppies play. But that wasn't the case last Saturday for one Norman resident. According to a police report, two dogs with separate owners were interacting when one dog apparently became aggressive and an owner decided to take matters into his own hands. Responded out there to a report of an animal that had been shot and apparently there was some sort of altercation between the animals that had been playing um, with each other and um, one of the owners believed the other one was becoming overly aggressive and then discharged a firearm striking the animal. Officers say the man suspected of shooting the dog was arrested. He has since been released and is now being charged with cruelty to animals and reckless conduct with a firearm. He also submitted a warrant request potential for potential charges over uh, regarding the incident. As for the dog shot, his owner has started a GoFundMe account to help pay for his dog's vet bills. Despite his injuries, the dog is expected to make a full recovery. His owner stated he just wants to see his best friend back to his full self. Back to you in the studio. Thanks, Emma. Several Norman residents pointed out that there are two areas for different sized dogs at the park, but that dog owners do not always follow the guidelines. Minneapolis Police Chief Madaria Arredondo took the stand in the trial of the police officer he fired, Derek Chauvin, after the death of George Floyd. Chauvin pleaded not guilty to second-degree unintentional murder, third-degree murder, and second-degree manslaughter charges. Camila, Camila Bernal is in Minneapolis as the trial shifts from what happened on the day Floyd died to the legal ramifications of Floyd's death. Derek Chauvin's former boss, Minneapolis Police Chief Madaria Arredondo testifying on the training and the code of ethics officers abide by. The goal is to resolve the situation as safely as possible. So uh, you want to always have de-escalation. An emergency room doctor says he treated Floyd for about 30 minutes, attempting to restart his heart. Was your leading theory then for the cause of Mr. Floyd's cardiac arrest? Oxygen, oxygen deficiency. That was one of the more likely possibilities I felt that at the time. The defense arguing drugs could impact breathing. Drug use, certain drugs can cause hypoxia, agreed? Yes. Specifically fentanyl? That's correct. How about methamphetamine? It can. Combination of the two? Yes. At some point during the more than nine minutes that Chauvin's knee was on Floyd's neck, videos show Floyd was unresponsive before the paramedics arrived. But officers did not provide basic efforts to save Floyd's life. Any amount of time that a patient spends in cardiac arrest without immediate CPR um, markedly decreases the chance of a good outcome. In Minneapolis, I'm Camila Bernal. The Minneapolis police chief also testified that Chauvin violated department policy by pinning his knee on Floyd's neck and keeping him down after he had stopped resisting and was in distress. The trial will continue tomorrow. And the governor of Arkansas vetoes a bill which would have restricted health treatments for transgender children. Colby Terrell has more on that story and the rest of today's national headlines from the News Center. Colby. Thank you, Caitlin. The governor of Arkansas just vetoed a bill that would have prohibited doctors from providing gender-affirming procedures for transgender people under the age of 18. Governor Asa Hutchinson called this bill a government out overreach, even though he thinks it's well intended. The Save Adolescents from Experimentation Act passed through the Arkansas House and Senate with an overwhelming majority. This bill would also ban trans people from receiving a treatment called cross-hormone therapy that helps them change their physical appearance to be more consistent with their gender identity. 
and Texas Governor Greg Abbott pulled out of delivering the Rangers' first pitch at their home opener. He decided this after the MLB pulled the All-Star game out of Atlanta due to a controversial Georgia voting bill. Abbott released a statement today stating, saying that it's shameful that America's pastime is being influenced by partisan politics. The new law will require a much more strict vetting process for voters and shortens the time it allows people to ask for mail-in ballots. The Republican governor says his choice does not reflect how he feels about the Rangers organization and he will continue rooting for them the rest of the season. And the Supreme Court will wipe away a ruling that former President Donald Trump violated the First Amendment by blocking Twitter followers. They dismissed the case because Trump is no longer in office and there is no more controversy with Trump's entire account being banned. While serving as president, he blocked seven individuals after they tweeted out their displeasure with him. The ruling was based on the argument that Trump's account became an official source of news about himself and the government. And Caitlin and Audrey, Uber is paying a settlement of $1.1 million for violating the Americans with Disabilities Act after being accused of denying a blind woman rights. That's the latest from the News Center. Back to you guys at the desk. Thanks, Colby. With the vaccination rollout continuing across Oklahoma, the spread of COVID-19 is trending downward. The Oklahoma State Department of Health is reporting over 200 new coronavirus cases across Oklahoma. This latest increase brings the state's total of active cases to more than 10,000. The CDC says the death toll is at almost 8,000. And Audrey, I sure have loved the warmer temperatures these last few days. Oh my gosh, it's been so nice. I just feel like I'm almost in a better new mood when the weather is outside. I agree. nice outside. Nash Rhodes is live with our first look at the live weather outside. Nash, can you tell us if this beautiful weather is going to stick around? Yeah, that's right, guys. The Yeah, that's right, guys. Weather conditions have just been incredible out here. In fact, several of the Norman apartment complexes have already just opened their swimming pools up today to take full advantage of this weather. Now we have highs in the upper 70s, lower 80s across the entire state, especially as you look further west. Places like Guyman now creeping into the upper 80s for highs as we have a nice warm up going on and some fairly strong winds to go along with it. Winds at 20 miles per hour out of the south. And we're only going to see those increase into tomorrow's. So we do have a chance of some scattered thunderstorms, especially to the northeastern portion of the state as the Storm Prediction Center now has a marginal one out of five risk for several of our northeastern counties, including Tulsa and Ida Belt. And I'll have more on that coming up in main weather. For now, back to you two at the desk. Coming up, an unlikely indicator of global warning, warming in Japan could be impacting ecosystems everywhere. Find out what scientists are saying about why early cherry blossom blooms might be related to climate change when we return. Plus, one Florida city is in a state of emergency due to a reservoir leak. Find out why officials are concerned and why the area was evacuated when we return. Well, spring has sprung here in Oklahoma, but in Japan, scientists are worried it came a little too soon. Olivia Daig has more in today's Earth Report. Olivia? Thanks, Audrey. In Japan, cherry blossom season is highly anticipated because the blooms are beautiful, but only last a few days. The bloom dates keep happening earlier and earlier, but this spring, the peak of the bloom happened on March 26th, marking the earliest bloom in 1,200 years. Experts say the trees are highly sensitive to temperature change and bloom when things warm up. Scientists think that this warming is a threat to ecosystems everywhere. Today, the Tampa Bay area is under a state of emergency and an evacuation warning. Yesterday, drones spotted a weak spot in the reservoir wall holding toxic water that's leaking. Florida creates a lot of fertilizer and the waste left over is stacked in these reservoirs, posing a huge threat to marine ecosystems. Yesterday, the governor declared the leak as a catastrophic flood situation. Today, officials announced they have increased the pumping of toxic water out of the retention pool in Piney Point and into Tampa Bay. Officials say residents drinking water is not contaminated and 300 homes have been evacuated. And in California, residents are still rattled after things were shaken up early this morning. An area east of the LAX airport experienced a 4.0 magnitude earthquake around a around 4.45 a.m. This was the second earthquake after a less serious tremor occurred half an hour earlier. The earthquake was measured unusually deep at about 12 miles below the Earth's surface. No immediate damages or injuries were reported. 
and Netflix's new documentary, Seaspiracy, is creating a lot of buzz. Fans say the film brings awareness to the harmful impact of commercial fishing, while others say it has taken facts out of context. Back to you. And thanks, Olivia. Coming up, Norman residents head to the polls for today's municipal elections. Find out more about what was on the ballot when we come back. And Nash, the weather has been absolutely beautiful today, but what does the rest of the week have in store? Yeah, that's right, great weather today, but don't get used to it for too long because we do have rain chances returning to the forecast. I'll let you know where and when coming right up. Welcome back to OU Nightly. Here's a live look at downtown Oklahoma City on what has been a beautiful Monday afternoon across the state. Temperatures currently just getting into the mid to upper 70s with those dew points up there as well, making it feel just a little bit humid and those winds now soaring out of the south at a sustained 20 miles per hour. And as we look at our current temperatures across the region, the further you go, the higher the temperature. Guyman at 85 degrees out to our west with those winds only increasing into tonight as our highs dip into the 60s for lows. Still about 10 to 15 degrees above where we typically are this time in April. Now tomorrow we'll continue to see those uh, rain chances increase, especially in the uh, evening hours. As we take a look at future radar though, tonight we will have a few scattered showers developing along the dry line. These will pop up and slowly make their way east overnight into early tomorrow morning. This is about 9 a.m. where some of us could see a spot shower or two in Oklahoma City, Norman, and as far north as Wichita. But once these showers move through, we should have a nice day in store for much of tomorrow, but that's when our attention will shift into south central Kansas. This is where we're watching for a few severe thunderstorms develop in the evening to overnight hours on Tuesday night into early Wednesday morning. As these develop, a few of them could make their way into the Tulsa metro area, especially just north of Oklahoma City. Uh, until a cold front comes through behind this uh, showers. These will this will produce a line of showers and as it does, it'll only lower our temperatures about five to 10 degrees before it eventually makes its way out of our state early Wednesday morning. So what does this mean for the severe weather threat? Well, a slight risk is up in Kansas, no longer affecting portions of northern Oklahoma like it was this morning. So for now we have a marginal one out of five risk for damaging straight line winds and perhaps even some large hail with the uh, beginnings of these storms. This threat does extend further south into Muskogee and Fort Smith. Meanwhile, we have a, a very low end severe weather threat uh, for Oklahoma City and Norman, where we will really just run the chance of seeing some heavy showers, perhaps even some lightning with the strongest of those storms. So let's take one last look at that seven day forecast. We're going to have temperatures in the mid to upper 70s tomorrow before we take a dip into the lower 70s after that front rolls through and then we'll slowly begin to climb back into the mid 70s by the weekend and not a chance of rain in sight after early Wednesday morning. Guys. Thank you, Nash. Norman voters head to the polls tomorrow with several items on the ballot. Voters will decide on the Ward 3 City Council seat, the Norman Street Maintenance Bond, and the number one seat on the Norman Education Board. The polls are open until 7 p.m. tonight, and voters are wanting more information are encouraged to go to the Cleveland County Election Board website. The polls will be open from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. tomorrow. And the Thunder took a huge loss over the weekend, but they look to bounce back tonight. Oh, Unitely Sports is next. Welcome back to OU Nightly. I'm Katie Arata and it's time for sports. Today is the day the madness comes to a close. Tonight at 820, the undefeated Gonzaga Bulldogs will play the 27-2 Baylor Bears. Both the Bulldogs and the Bears are number one seeds and both are looking for their respective program's first ever NCAA tournament championship. Now let's talk about how they got there. Saturday afternoon, the number two seed Houston Cougars played the Baylor Bears, and the Bears embarrassed the Cougars to the tune of a 78-59 final. But the talk of the town came from Saturday night's game, where the number 11 seed UCLA Bruins took on the Zags. The game stayed close and even went into overtime, where Gonzaga's Jalen Shugs landed a near half-court buzzer beater, sending the Bulldogs to the championship game. Head coach Mark Few didn't celebrate long because he knows the task ahead. We got, I mean, we got a short <laughs> duration here to get ready for just, gosh, just a terrific uh, Baylor team. I think now they're back playing, uh, you know, the way they were earlier in this year and just so well coached and just um, great plan and just executing the plan, stepping up, making shots, uh, playing great defense. 
And bringing it back to the Lloyd Noble Center on Saturday, OU announced their new men's basketball head coach, Loyola Chicago's Porter Moser. Moser has been one of the hottest mid-major coaches in the country since leading Loyola Chicago to the Final Four in 2018. The new boss says Norman felt like the right place for him. Uh, it's, it's always hard to leave something that you've invested in and, and where you love people. But I couldn't, this was such a perfect fit for me. In some breaking news this afternoon, three years after hailing him as a franchise savior, the New York Jets have traded Sam Darnold to the Carolina Panthers. In return for Darnold, the Jets received three picks, a sixth rounder in the 2021 draft, a second rounder, and a fourth rounder in the 2022 draft. Without a quarterback on the roster, the Jets are expected to select Darnold's replacement in the April 29 draft. An OU women's gymnastic is heading to the NCAA semifinal this week. The number one Sooners handed Alabama its first ever home regional loss and eliminated both Arkansas and Missouri. The Sooners scored their high, second highest score of the season in Tuscaloosa on Saturday night. Oklahoma will compete again next Friday at 6 in Fort Worth. And the Sooners softball team continued to crush their opponents this weekend in Norman, sweeping the Kansas Jayhawks. The Sooners remain undefeated this season with a 28-0 record. They have now pushed their unbeaten streak to 35 straight games and won their 56 straight Big 12 Conference Series. In sticking to the diamond, the Sooner baseball team did not have the same luck this weekend. The Sooners were swept by number 12 TCU. The Horn Frogs outscored OU by a total of 35 to 16 through the three contests. Oklahoma looks to rebound tomorrow at 630 where they will face Oral Roberts here in Norman. An Oklahoma men's golf team sits alone in third place at the inaugural Calusa Cup with two days left of play. The Sooners fired a first round score of 293 and responded to a tough front nine with 12 birdies on the back nine to move up to the leaderboard. An OU senior women's golfer Caitlin Milligan traveled to Augusta, Georgia last week to play in the Augusta National Women's Amateur. Milligan came home with a top 20 finish at 19th. Tonight, the Oklahoma City Thunder will play Detroit Pistons at the Chesapeake Arena. The Thunder are coming off their largest loss in team history, falling to the Portland Trail Brazers 133-85 on Saturday. They're hoping to change up their momentum while they play at home. And the first Sunday night baseball game of the 2021 season was nothing short of interesting. LA Angels pitcher Shohei Ohtani started on the mound as a batting and was batting in the number two hole. This was the first time since 1976 that an American League team willingly gave up its DH spot. Otani hit the first pitch he saw 450 feet, collecting his first home run of the season. And finally, we wish Al Horford a speedy recovery from old. Friday night, the Thunder played the Suns, and the broadcast listed all the injured players, including the five-time All-Star, who suffers from a severe case of being born in the 80s. Horford was the Thunder... Horford and the Thunder agreed for him to sit out for the remainder of the NBA season. And it looks like that's all the time we have for sports, but make sure to tune into Sooner Sports Pad tonight at 9 on Valley Sports Oklahoma for more sports coverage. Back to you guys. And thanks, Katie. Coming up next, the White House welcomes a special guest at a press conference this morning. Stick around to find out what went down when we return after the break. I'm Addie Crawford at the OU Nightly Update Desk. Despite problems with the Johnson & Johnson vaccine, the U.S. will still have enough vaccines for all adult Americans by the end of next month. This announcement comes after 15 million doses of the Johnson & Johnson vaccines were discarded due to quality control inspection. The U.S. is planned for a range of contingencies in case issues like this one happen again. Back to you in the studio. Thanks, Addie. And even though the annual White House Easter egg roll was canceled for the second year in a row, it sure didn't stop President Biden and the First Lady from bringing some Easter cheer to the White House. The Easter Bunny spread some Easter cheer this morning where he passed out commemorative Easter eggs. And yes, the bunny also made sure to follow COVID protocols by wearing a mask. <laughs> and now Nash has one last look at the forecast and hopefully it's some more great weather. Nash. 
Yeah, well, hey, great news for you. Much better weather even tomorrow. Temperatures in the upper 70s, low 80s, especially further west. Guyman up to 84 degrees. Could even make it into the mid to upper 80s. And we could have some rain showers early tomorrow morning. But again, many of us will stay nice and dry throughout much of the day with, where a few thunderstorms could roll in late Tuesday night into early Wednesday morning. But as we take a look at that seven day forecast, we see our temperature drop about five degrees with that system moving through tomorrow night into Wednesday morning. And then we will stay nice and dry all the way throughout the upcoming weekend and into the start of the next work week. And thank you for tuning in to OU Nightly. And tomorrow is an instructional holiday at OU. So that means we'll see you back here Wednesday live at 430. Good night.